Hello, it's Miss Darling in the studio. Welcome. If you're here for the first time, I hope you'll subscribe and become a member of our little community. We'd love to have you. And today we're going to be making a mini journal. And this is really fun. It's quite easy. And it has 56 pages, so there's a lot of writing space there. Now, I used Tim Holtz cover stock for my cover and one of the reasons I like his stock is not only because of the great designing and color palettes that he uses but because the paper comes printed on both sides so it just makes a really easy way to do a cover and not have to worry about too much. Now I am using a stock of his, a paper pad of his that was 12 by 12 and if I'm not misunderstanding I believe that he is discontinuing that or maybe already has and is offering smaller sizes I'm not even sure if he has an 8x8 anymore he may be down to simply 6x6 would be, which would be a quarter of the size of a 12x12 sheet so if you want the larger sizes you should go exploring immediately uh, hopefully there are still some vendors on Amazon that have some that they can still sell. But do note that much of the previous stock and products that he offered for sale have been discontinued. And um, so, uh, good luck. Anyway, out of the stock that I have left, which is, well, it looks like more than it is, and the reason I say that is I'm now left with lots of duplicates of, of things that I wasn't particularly, particularly interested in using before. I chose this page because it's already nicely divided for me in the dimensions that I use for this mini journal. And you can see this interior page sample. Oh my goodness. Oh. Um, Fit, would fit very nicely into that and so then I'm looking for okay what do I have on the right side that would make an interesting cover and I only see two strips that um, possibly that one but uh, only two of them that I think are interesting enough so those are going to be the two I'm going to cut out and use and so let's get to it. And by the way, if you find this video helpful and valuable to you, I hope you'll give it a like. You know, as I'm doing this, just drop down real quickly and give it a like and make a quick comment or ask a question. Uh, that would be great. And also I should state I have an Etsy shop where I offer lots of resources that will help you in your projects, whatever they are. Be sure and check that out. Links to my shop and to some other tools and products that I don't offer in my Etsy shop that might be available elsewhere. I provide links to those in the description box so there's that resource for you as well Okay, so as I said earlier, I'm particular about what goes on my cover, and of the four designs available, I like these two the best, so these are going to be the ones I will use, and I'm, I may, might not have enough paper on hand to make two, but we'll see now. 
of these two. I love numbers, but I can always put numbers on. I think maybe I'll use that one for this video. Now let's look at my inside. Okay, the that would be the inside front cover and this would be the inside back cover. So that's a back cover and that's a back cover. Hmm, sort of evenly split. All right. Well, I still think I'm going to go with this one. I like that one too, but I think for purposes of the video, I will make this one. And of course, we'll be folding it in half. Okay, see how simple that was? Now, you don't need to use Tim Holtz, obviously, and uh, you don't even need to use these measurements either. So, you know, just follow along the tutorial in terms of how I make it and alter it as you see fit. All right, now, here's a sample page. And... These are all coffee dyed sheets that are cutaways used from other projects that has a rip in it. Okay, so I counted up and there's 13 sheets of paper. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, I can get, uh, maybe not all. I can get two out of most of the sheets, so I will have enough to pull together 13 sheets all together. So now it's a matter of just cutting them and uh, let me find a pencil here. Use this as our template. And I think I'm going to try to cut them all at one time to save time. I guess I better mark. So I am two and three quarter inches tall. Might not be the best idea to do them all at once. Uh, let's see. I have a lot of these clamps. 
in stock, which really, over the course of my time doing this, have come in so handy to have. Okay, there's my mark. And here's my mark. When you cut multiple things, don't use a tremendous amount of pressure. Don't try to get through all on one pass. It's much better to use softer pressure and come back and do it as many times as you need to to get all the way through. I think that I'm through now. And now I need, I believe it's eleven inches, just under eleven inches this way. Well, I'm right there, but I do have some overhangs that I'll need to trim off. Okay. Now we have one in our sample, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and I need two more. So get rid of the thinner one. to my other clamp. There you are. And we were at two. <coughs> well, these are not the right size. So I have four sheets that are big enough. of an inch shy. I thought I had room to spare. Okay, well, we're going to have some sheets in there that are a little bit shorter than the others. And I might eliminate that one because it's in pretty bad shape. I'll keep it as a sample. So, that leaves ten 11, 11, 12, 13. I'll keep one for a sample. So these are a little bit not quite as tall as the other ones. So I'm going to feed them through ever so often. I'll stick one of those in. Wait a minute, that's, those two are short. Oh, I guess they're okay. Um, more. Stick one in. And the original one that I made, I had a sheet of wrinkled up 
brown bag paper but I'm not going to do that this time around so here we go and um, I think I'm going to fold these in half one by one as you the paper moves more to the center your pages become shorter because they're being pushed forward at the fold so just be aware that you will do some trimming at the end once we've adhered them all together so we know they're not going to move and I'm going to take the easy way and do it with my sewing machine That's nice. I think I'd like that on the outside. All right. I like to kind of mix up the colors so I don't have all the darker ones grouped together and all the lighter ones grouped together. I like to mix them up and pick one to open with. This one's a little bit different. So I think I'll start with that and put a light one in and maybe a medium one in then a darker one again then a light one let's try to vary it a little bit with a few lighter ones toward the middle. That's okay. Yeah. Lighter on one side and darker on the other, so we'll just flip that around. Maybe make that our center. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to sew it in half and then trim it afterwards. And so I'll be right back. All right, I'm back and I've chosen some things for the cover and you can see that I have sewed the internal pages onto the cover with my sewing machine. And let me just snip off a couple of 
things here. And if you notice on the prototype, I covered over the machine area with a little bit of fabric. And I'm going to do the same thing. And I think the key to this, you not only want to pick a fabric that blends with the color palette of the paper, particularly on the cover, but you don't want something so strong that it draws a lot of attention to itself. That's not where we want the attention to go to. And so we want to be careful what we choose. So I've gone through a bunch of my fabrics and pulled out a bunch of things that have some of the green or maybe the goldenrod in it. Not so much the brown. I'm looking for something with a little more color. I think this could work, though it's a little bit strong. I'm concerned it might attract too much attention. This is nice in the sense that the design is small, and when you're working on just a small piece, you want to use a small pattern, otherwise, you know, what's the point? But uh, it's a little too bright. This would pull out a little bit of the of the um, yellow goldish color in the flowers, but it's really not the right. It's too orange. I love this as a fabric. I think that's beautiful and uh, very sophisticated looking. Let's see what that would look like uh, in miniature. We did something like that. I think that could work. It's maybe a little stronger than I would like in terms of attracting attention, but it's the best of the choices I have so far. Here's something, again, it's very bright. I love this uh, black and white, but it really doesn't fit. This has a little softer, uh, kind of the same color palette. We've got green and gold there. We could choose from this or from that. Um, if I did like that. Eh. It definitely doesn't draw attention to itself but it, it's a possible. Here we got this, which I think maybe works a little better. What if we did that? The pattern is pretty large. Let's see, what if we cut from there? And we took a piece of that. Mm. It doesn't grab me. I think I like this better even though even though the pattern is quite large for something this small. So I think that's a choice over that one. I've got this very dark. and dramatic. That could work. Do I like that better than this? I'm going to go dark and dramatic. I think I like that better. I think it's a little classier. Now it's too bright. What have we got here? That introduces some red. Yeah. Okay. I've got this, a little softer green. Is the other thing I have to think about is that I am going to use this green butterfly and so it needs to also look good with that. 
So this could work. Let's see how this looks. I like that. Not so much. Okay, so we're down to these two. And I think I'm going to go with my overall favorite. I just think that would be really classy. So I need a good half inch. I think I might do a little bit more than half an inch. There's half an inch. A little bit more. I think we'll kind of go into there. I do like the ragged side on the front. So I think that's how we're going to come out. Clean up here a little bit. So, I think we're going to glue that down first because if I have a, I think I have a design element I want to run all the way out to the end, but I don't know yet whether it's better to uh, I put it under there and I come on top I lose the main word so I would need to come out further here's what I'm going for on that side I think I do like that coming over on top of the ephemera. I'd rather have my paper glued where it's down flat if I try to put it over on top of the fabric then it's no longer flat and that could be a, an issue. You want to be a tough guy, huh? Getting a little fraying over on the back side now, which is nice. I always like a frayed edge. Come on. Any day now. Let's not go on vacation yet. The holiday has not started yet. So you don't get to sit down on the job. There we go.
All right, and now I'm going to lay that in the background. Maybe I'll just put a little edging on it. And as you all know, I like numbers, and I particularly like the number three for personal reasons. And that's what I'm doing for my cover. I'm going to age it a little bit. Now if you're doing something very similar, you have the option of also decorating the back cover or even the inside covers for this video however I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to do the front cover and um, that needs some help that could pass for its own yeah probably going to have to do the back cover and the inside as well before I'm totally happy. But, just for the sake of making this little video, uh, I think we'll not go to the trouble to decorate the back and the inside front. But I think I'm going to Maybe give a few little butterfly stamps since my theme is butterflies, creativity, and uh, maybe we'll do like three butterflies inside or something to tie in a little bit with the cover, make people wonder. So, you can, of course, do anything you want to with the pages or nothing at all. It's completely up to you, but I have these little butterfly stamps that don't get much usage. So I think we'll kind of add a little something here and there.
particular stamps give kind of a <coughs> weathered look to them, I think. I'm not getting a really rich reproduction. It's looking quite weathered instead. But we'll go with it anyway. one's a little better. Maybe I'll do one of those on the front. Maybe if you try to stamp on too many sheets at one time I mean the thickness. Nope, I think I got a better one toward the back. That might not make any difference at all. I'll put a few more in here. Just for fun. Oh! Look who just showed up. You'll what never guess. <laughs> it's Miss Swoop. Hello everyone! <laughs> With the green Ooh, nail polish! Look, it's like Christmas time! Yeah. A neon Christmas. <laughs> what are you working on? I'm, we've been working on a mini journal. Oh, that's so cute! I made one of these before. <gasps> these are so and, cute! And uh, so we just made one, made this one today. I love them! We've got copy, coffee dyed paper. That's so cute! And Gives you 56 little pages. It's like for a little journaling. passport journal, yeah. little pocket journal. That's you so did. cute. So, this is the one you're doing this now? This is the one we just made. Love that. You know, I love number three. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I love the your signature I got butterflies. These, these little butterfly stamps. This is so fun. I like these a lot. What a Thank cute you. idea. I can see that being like a great like little gift idea too yeah. for somebody. And they're very easy to make. Yeah. You just sew them uh, with a sewing machine down the middle onto the cover and yeah. that couldn't be easier way to bind them. That's so cute. Will you make me one? Sure. Can I put in a request? Yes, you may. I need to get you some cat stamps and then you can ah. just make me some cat ones or for okay. the billing department. All right. Well, you uh, find the stamps. <laughs> I'll certainly use right. them. That's a, that's a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to give you a thumbs up, oh, but oh, this okay. way? All right. Okay. Wait, does your thumb go backwards like mine? No. You're the only one who's <laughs> disjointed. <laughs> All right. Well, have fun. All right. Thank you. See you in a few minutes. Okay, people. That's it. So... I hope you found this fun and entertaining and useful to you. Again, please give the video a like and give a comment. I would appreciate that. Ask a question, make suggestions, whatever. And um, also check my Etsy shop in the description box below. And so with that said, oh, I need to look a little nicer here not so messy so with that said this is miss darling calling this a wrap bye bye <laughs>